everybody, I'm Josh Witten, um, like Lexi said 10 minutes ago, and uh, I left my clicker at home, so I'm going to go over here and punch this little computer every once in a while. So I'm still deciding what to call this talk. Um, one title might be uh, a paleo and anti-aging dietary protocol, um, or how to get the benefits of CR without CR, calorie restriction, or autophagy, get some. So. Um, you can tell me later which is the best. Uh, when I say, um, you know, one of my hobbies is to, is to find the optimal dietary protocol for, for the human being. And when I mean optimal, I mean that you will have the body composition you want, uh, you'll have the quickest mind you can have, um, you will live disease-free and for as long as reasonably possible. Uh, when I say dietary protocol, I mean not just uh, what you eat, but also when to eat. That's why it's a protocol. So we're all pretty familiar with this picture here. Uh, you know, a long time ago they figured out that if you fed animals a lot less, uh, they could live a lot longer. In this one you've got rats uh, living about 60% longer, um, eating about 65% less. I actually tried this. Um, uh, as a self-experimenter, not 65% less, but I did uh, 25 or 30 percent, and um, I looked like a prisoner of war uh, when I was doing it. Um, but to be fair to the calorie restriction, it's partly because I'm dressing like a prisoner of war for some reason. Um, um, <clears throat> the other thing I figured out is that uh, if you're doing calorie restriction, uh, it really helps if you are locked in a cage because otherwise if you're a free roaming human being you will be all gung-ho about your calorie restriction longevity experiments and then at the office you will walk by the free plate of cookies drop into a trance wake up and find you know greasy crummy fingers and, and lips and um, uh, turns out you know I'm, I'm so gung-ho about something when I get hooked on it um, if I kept reading about calorie restriction, I would have found out that they had discovered um, alternate day calorie restriction, meaning that uh, you don't really um, need to cut the calories so drastically that actually if you just don't feed the animal uh, one day and then let it eat as much as it wants uh, the next day, uh, you get the same benefits. And so I tried that for a while, and that's actually a lot easier because um, if you're fasting completely, it um, makes it easier to reflect on all the great stuff you ate yesterday and all the wonderful things you're going to eat tomorrow. So, so that's definitely an improvement. But um, it makes you wonder what is the actual mechanism at work here because it wasn't the overall calories. Is it something about the alternate day? Like what is it? Um, latest um, answer to that question from my perspective is that um, it has to do with a thing called autophagy. Um, at least significantly. So what is autophagy? Autophagy means that when your body is not getting all the nutrients it needs from your diet, that it will turn to self-eating inside of the cell. The cell will go and find junk that's floating around uh, inside the cell and will recycle that junk and break it down. Um, and this uh, improves cell performance and lengthens cell life and things like that. Now, why is the junk there? You know, why isn't the body just cleaning it out regularly to keep us all healthy? Well, it turns out that this junk is worth recycling, and your body doesn't have a good um, protein storage mechanism like it does uh, you know, your, your fat tissue storage mechanism. So it's waiting for the day that the hunt doesn't go so well, and you need to, to use this junk inside the cells for recyclable materials and the essential amino acids. Um, that's why it's there. And this is quite possibly um, how calorie restriction works because you're just limiting the amount of nutrients the body is getting and it turns the autophagy on. So the exciting news, the reason I'm pretty much giving this talk uh, is because there is a strong possibility that you can get the same benefit of calorie restriction or you can at least trigger the autophagy without the calorie restriction. Uh, the trick is that there are three types uh, of autophagy. Um, 
One of them uh, is triggered when you uh, don't get enough carbohydrate, at least it's heightened perhaps, when you don't get enough carbohydrate by the presence of ketones, and that's called carrier-mediated autophagy. And the other two kinds are called macro and micro autophagy, and they happen when you don't get enough protein. Um, another difference there, important difference, is that the carrier-mediated autoph autophagy is selective. So the carriers, these little you know, sentries in the, or sentinels in the, in the cell are going around and trying to escort this junk, this misfolded protein, this decommissioned mitochondria or whatever, over to a lysome, a sort of black hole in the cell to be broken down. Um, and that's selective. Problem is that sometimes the junk is too big for the carrier, or the carrier is eluding, I'm sorry, the, the junk is eluding detection. Um, and in that case, you have something called macro and micro autophagy that can kick in, as I said, in the absence of protein in the diet. And the macro and micro autophagy are non-selective. That's what's so interesting about them. They, the, 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 the lysome just starts sucking in cytoplasm and filtering um, through the cytoplasm in your body. And then it can snag not just this junk, but also weird things that are, have like a cloaking device like viruses and whatnot. So I really need a group experiment here. The next time one of you gets the flu, start fasting immediately and write me and tell me how quickly you got over, which is something we need to try together to figure out. Um, one of the kinds of, of autophagy, microautophagy, um, involves the junk sort of being enveloped by the, uh, by the lysome. Um, that's called uh, invagination, which is a word that you should try to squeeze into casual conversation uh, whenever <laughs> you can. Um, okay, so um, the big picture then, it's easy to figure out from here, is that uh, some days you don't eat very much carbohydrate. And I would say, in general, don't eat very much carbohydrate. And you will have the carrier-mediated autophagy going on. And on other days, you don't eat any protein. And on both days, you eat all the fat you want. Um, for those who don't know, and in this crowd it's not too many, uh, dietary fat is probably one of the healthiest, most innocuous things you can eat. Um, and so I am on a high-fat diet. I consume about 70% um, of my diet as fat. This was three months in. Um, I leaned up. Um, and that was my before picture. I'm the one on the right. So um, <laughs> high-fat diet, all for it. And what we have then by um, understanding this principle of autophagy and what triggers it is we're moving from possibly uh, a very sort of arduous, taking a lot of discipline kind of calorie restriction over to what I would call macronutrient uh, regulation. Just knowing what's in your food, knowing what to eat on certain days. Um, so to be more specific about the protocol, I would suggest, and this is my version, I'm always revising it, you can go to joshwitten.com and check out the latest version, but the latest version, as far as I'm concerned now, is that um, five or six days a week, I'm eating ultra low carb, uh, meaning less than 30 grams, not including fiber, very high fat, about 70% fat, um, and about 20% protein. That gets you the carrier-mediated autophagy, gets you good body composition, you're staying away from grains and sugars, you're avoiding anti-nutrients and inflammation, and you're quite possibly reducing glycation. Glycation being part of the um, mess that we're in, in that the body breaks down uh, sugar very inefficiently. Not very inefficiently, but it adds up over time. We've gotten used to this inefficiency, and we call it aging. And so by reducing your exposure to glucose, and especially things like fructose, uh, you can reduce the glycation occurring in the advanced glycation end products, which is what the autophagy um, is there to, to help repair. Um, now this protocol is, oh, and I'm sorry, uh, the other part of the protocol, the most important part, is that one to two days a week, you are eating very low protein, less than 15 grams. Um, try to do it for 24 hours. If you do it all day, then plus sleep time, that's about 32 hours of, um, of, of protein restriction. Again, all the fat you want. Um, and on this day, have more carbs. Treat yourself, you know, an extra sweet potato or something like that. Um, that gets you the macro and micro autophagy, which is the non-selective, super beneficial filtering through your cytoplasm. Um, if you keep that up, uh, then, you know, within, you know, a couple, a couple years, doing that twice a week, you've nearly half your cytoplasm has been filtered through. 
um, and junk removed that your carrier-mediated autophagy might be missing. The number is actually higher than that because that's based on 24 hours, um, and we're going for I'm going for 32 hours um, of autophagy. Um, this is easy to do if you know how to eat a high-fat paleo diet. If you don't, don't mess around with the stuff. You're just going to drive yourself crazy. If you know, you know how to make coconut flour salmon cakes, okay, you, you can do this. If you know how to, if you eat a lot of coconut and things like that, you can do this. Um, um, thank you, yeah. Um, I need a recipe book because I just, I just ate the deer like that. Like I didn't know what to do with it, so we'll get together. No, um, <laughs> pastured, you know, food quality is a huge part of paleo. And I know pastured and grass-fed meat are expensive, but I want to remind you all that we're all an 80 cent cartridge away from getting 60 pounds of grass-fed, bark-fed, berry-fed <laughs> meat, okay? So stop outsourcing, you know, your, your food execution. Just man up, woman up. Um, and the other thing that makes this easy to do is to understand, again, what the properties of food are. You need to learn, um, if you want to be a dietary technology wizard, you need to learn what the various properties of food are. These are the magic phrases in your spell book, okay? So uh, what do I mean? I mean facts like uh, that one apple has as much carbohydrate in it as 30 strawberries, okay? Take your pick. You want a dozen strawberries, you want an apple now, right? Um, things like, uh, you know, you cook up a bunch of kale and a bunch of bacon fat, and you're going to get filled up without any protein on your protein restriction days. You're going to, you're not starving. You're really enjoying yourself. Knowing that macadamia nuts have the least protein of any nut out there, um, and almost no omega-6, which is very peculiar for a nut. So it's that sort of thing. Um, and really, as an affluent Westerner, you have an unprecedented opportunity and privilege. You can eat whatever you want, whenever you want, flown from wherever in the world. And that is something that almost no human being before our time has had the privilege of doing. So don't waste it. You have access to this stuff. Figure out, together, let's figure out what is the optimal uh, human diet. And um, there's a lot of compelling evidence for, for this, but we need more people experimenting with it. And so I am asking all of you out there with a bent for this kind of thing um, to join the experiments. I wouldn't ask you to do it unless I was seeing good results personally and if I didn't think it was actually fun. And um, I hope you will find, I know you will find this much more fun than pure calorie restriction. So join the experiment with me. You can go to joshwitten.com for more. And I want to give credit to Dr. Ron uh, McNary uh, for his book, Protein Cycling, freely available online. It discusses autophagy in much more detail than I have today. Just be warned that Ron is not a paleo practitioner, so the poor guy walks around way hungrier than I do, probably. So thanks again, everybody. Bye-bye. Oh, I have, I have masterfully left exactly two minutes for questions, totally planned. Uh, yeah, I believe that's where they're starting um, with the rats, but also lots of it in vitro as well, just so they can actually observe the, uh, the autophagosomes forming and things like that. I don't know if you can do that inside the living creature. You have to biopsy and then, and then watch it. I don't, I don't think these, this protocol is being studied on anything, which is why I'm here to deliver it. So if you study in the anti-aging community, you see them doing some things. If you study the paleo community, you see them getting some things right. And there's not as much uh, synthesis between the two as there needs to be. And the studies going on are actually very poor. I tried to join a, a calorie restriction study going on in my neighborhood back at Duke University. And it's, it's complete calorie restriction. It's not even ADCR. So I can't leave it to the lab coats right now. They're just not doing a good job. One more? Yes, in front. Um, I don't know for sure, but I have a hunch. And so on my protein restriction days, I absolutely do work out to try to increase my protein requirements in hopes that it will um, trigger the autophagy more rapidly. Uh, last tidbit before I blow the stage here is that 
We're all disappointed in resveratrol, I know, and that is not what it was cracked up to be. If you still got a bottle left and you won't, don't want to throw it away, then the, the absolute best chance for it to do something is on that protein restriction day. When you're in about midpoint into the fast, pop that resveratrol pill, and it has been shown in some studies to increase the autophagy onset. So thanks a lot. Bye-bye.